It's likely that the invasion started sometime in the mid-1980s. That's when the first reported sighting was of lionfish, just north of Miami. You have an animal that, once it invades, um, can really increase in population numbers very rapidly. Well, lionfish really are sort of the perfect storm. Uh, I think in many ways, as invasive species goes, they have a lot of characteristics which make them very successful in, in the invaded range. They reproduce very early in life, so they reach maturity, they grow very rapidly. They're capable of dispersing uh, large distances during their egg and larval phase, which ride ocean currents. A species that has venomous spines, they don't seem to have many native predators or predators in their invaded range here, so it's possible that because they're so armored with the venomous spines that, that they don't have a lot of natural predators, which would lead them to basically not worry about in general, one of the major impacts that we're going to find from this is, is essentially the fact that they're eating a whole variety of, of our native species. For one, they're removing prey that would have been available for many of our native fish stocks, like snapper and grouper that are feeding on similar uh, small-bodied reef fishes. They're also certainly having a direct predatory impact on many of those small reef fishes. And while we don't fish for those species, those species perform important ecological services on the reef. Very little is known about lionfish biology and ecology. Our research program on lionfish here in northeastern Florida is trying to characterize a lot of the life history traits uh, of lionfish. So we're looking at things like how fast do they grow, uh, how many times do they reproduce, how many eggs do they produce. Most of the fish that we get for our work is actually through collaborations with local fishermen. Many of those folks are very interested, obviously, in what's going on with their ecosystem and supports their livelihood, and so they're very eager to help for our part. We get to get samples from a huge geographic area that would cost us thousands of dollars to run our own research program. I think the best chance we have um, to, to mitigate some of the impacts of lionfish is to encourage uh, fishery removals, whether that's through recreational spear fishermen or whether that's through the development of a commercial a lionfish fishery, whether that be through traps or spearfishing or any of these other gear types, but uh, just get a larger fraction of these fish out of the water. I think right now the best strategy we have for controlling the fish is human consumption. If we can increase the amount harvested uh, through a variety of ways, uh, increase demand for this species in both seafood markets, increase demand in terms of restaurants to get restaurants to carry it. At this point, no one's talking about eradication, of course. But again, if you can have enough effort and mitigate, uh, it's been shown at relatively small scales that uh, can dent the population and you can see rebounds in, in some of the native fish species.